Welcome to the Tinker's Workshop and part three of the David Steele Sosilva CNC machine build. Uh, I've been making a lot of progress in the shop here over the last week or so uh, collecting parts and building special parts uh, that will be in the machine that we're putting together for the QC Colab in Davenport, Iowa. Uh, as usual, I'm not able to give you the material list or the uh, dimensions on a lot of these parts simply because you're going to have to buy the set of plans. They're not my plans, they're David Steele's. And you can get those online at solsilva.com. And, uh, but I, what I'm showing you here is just the general idea of what it takes to put one of these machines together. But I'm going to cover some uh, modifications that I've done to the machine that I think will improve uh, using the machine. And uh, those I can give you dimensions and uh, show you what it's all about. Uh, but we've been, I've been making a lot of parts over the last week, and uh, so that's what we're going to cover today, show you what, uh, what all you're getting into. It's, it's uh, quite, a, quite a lot of work, but again, it's not difficult, and it's something that uh, anybody can do if they have the, have the right tools, and uh, you don't need a big shop. My, uh, the Tinker's Workshop here is very, very tiny, and so uh, if I can do it, anybody can do it. So let's get into it. This is a, a good view of the CNC machine. The orange rods that you see on, in this view of the machine are used uh, to hold the wiring up that uh, power the stepper motor and the router. And then yeah, the router is the yellow uh, uh, mounting in the middle of the, the view. Let's zoom in here to go in a little closer. This is a, um, this is a DeWalt trim router. It's a two and a quarter horse, 32,000 RPM router. It's got a lot of power. It's a very good machine and uh, works great for the CNC. The, uh, part, like as I was saying, the orange rods here are used to, to keep the wires off of the table when you're cutting parts or engraving or whatever. And all it is is a little wooden block. This is just another little wooden block that's mounted to the gantry here. And I used our quarter inch uh, diameter bolts that are countersunk and they go all the way through. And then uh, there's a spring that gets mounted in here. It's a half inch outer diameter spring, uh, 072 gauge wire, and it's four inches long. And what this orange rod is, is nothing more than a, a piece of uh, marker rod that you use on your driveway to mark your driveway. Here in the Midwest we get a lot of snow so they mark the driveway so you know where to drive in and not go into the ditch. I use one of these rods. They're aluminum, or I should say a fiberglass rod and uh, I cut this down to around 20 inches long and uh, let's go over to the bench. I'll show you how it's all put together. So here's the rods all assembled and we can, we can pull one of these apart. Well, what this is is nothing more than a little a little wooden block. It's about uh, two inches square, inch and a half uh, thick, and I drilled it out for a quarter inch bolts, and then the top is drilled out for a half inch diameter to handle the spring. One thing I learned on the uh, building the first CNC machine was that you had to have an additional little piece of this rod uh, down inside the spring. Otherwise, your rod won't bend. Uh, when it when it gets pulled across in the wire. So what we do is take the spring. This is like I said. This is the the spring. It's uh, four inches in length, half inch diameter, zero seven two gauge wire. The first one I used was um, two light a gauge. This feels really stiff, but when it work when it's in the machine, it works really well. Uh, the first gauge being two light a wire. The the uh, the poles would be bent over, and then. Uh, there wasn't enough, enough strength to make them stand up again. So I had to go to a stiffer wire. These are four inches long and they're, they're, uh, they've got a loop on the end of them. What I did was took a hacksaw and cut that loop off and then filed these down so there are no sharp edges. And so you, you just drill a hole and then slide it in. It fits just real nice. And then we'll take this little piece here. This is the same length as the depth of this top hole. So we'll, we'll just drop this in. There we go. And then we'll take the rod. This little rod here is, let me back up a ways. The rod here with the silver on it, that one right there, is around 20 inches long. 
And this is my design so I can give you these dimensions. This is my idea. So we'll slide this in here like that and that's it. That's all you got to do. And then you uh, take some ties and run your wire up the, up the pole and put some ties. You could use electrical tape. You could use Velcro. Uh, anything to keep that wire hung onto it. And then, it. and then it'll bend over the way you want when, when the wires get pulled over. So you need to make two of those. And uh, these aren't painted yet, but they will be. And uh, we'll just uh, clamp them onto the uh, gantry, the Y gantry, and uh, drill the holes, and, and it'll be real quick and easy, and it works, works really well. On the workbench here, you can see a lot of parts that have collected up over the last week, and uh, the uh, good portion of these are new design that I've come up with that I can show you a little more detail about and why I did this. Let's go over to the, uh, the machine here. First off, the white uh, surface here on the, on the table are, is one by fours and they're spaced apart so that you can put a clamp up through the table. This is all well and good, but it has its drawbacks simply because I have to come up through the entire table in order to put a clamp in and then I can only move, move the clamp about a foot. I can't go down the entire length. I have to take it apart and then bring it up through the table again, which gets to be a real hassle. What I did, we're going to do on the QC Colab table, I'm changing this to, uh, instead of 1x4s in the white here, instead of using 1x4s, we're going to use 2x4s, and we're going to modify the table accordingly to allow for that. And what I did was took the 2x4s and cut notches out of both, both sides, all the way down the line. So we'll bring one of these over here and show you what the advantage of this is. So we're going to flip this over just so you can see what's going on here. So if you have a, let me get another one. There you go. Now if this is the upside, these are actually upside down. But if you ran a clamp now, we can run a clamp from the end. Instead of coming up through the table from the end, and it gets put on here and slid all the way down the line. So if these are in the correct orientation, they're, they're put like this, flipped over. And there's your slot. Now on the end, get, the, get down here where you can see it. There you go. Now on the end, we can run our clamp all the way down the line. There we go. Run it all the way down the line through this end. And we won't have to come up through the table at all. And there's enough thickness here. These are cut uh, three-quarter inch by three-quarter inch on both sides. And then they're screwed down. And... and uh, and mounted. And then the table here, the legs here, I lengthened these an additional three inches on the new table for the collab and then these legs here will lengthen these also an additional three inches. What this does is allow for the table to accept the uh, two by fours instead of one by fours and also gives you uh, more length here in your z-axis. Right now I've got about two and a half inches of travel from the tip to the table, if this was an actual part we're going to cut, this blue uh, pad, uh, the, the length you've got, the movement you got is two and a half inches. Well now, with raising this up three inches, uh, we've got almost uh, four inches of travel. And so that'll be a, a big plus, and, and using the uh, T-slot will be a, just a, a real joy to, to do. Also on the table here, we've got a lot of parts. Um, these two guys here are nothing more than a 2x4 that I split down the middle to make 2x2s. And this is for bracing down underneath the table. That's this guy right here on both sides. And those are just to hold this little shelf that I put in here. I, in part one, I, I mentioned uh, this shelf. Uh, what this does is keep the debris off of your electronics. Get it down in there. Er, 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 there we go. Okay. It keeps the debris off your electronics and uh, it makes it much easier because what happens is you're milling out a part and all the debris comes through these comes through these slots and gets blown down in there. So it keeps it a lot cleaner. Uh, but these little these little two by twos are, are drilled out and mounted to the uh, the side legs here, these side supports. And then the shelf will, uh, in part four, will cover the, the build of this 
build of this uh, table mount, uh, the stand I should say. The stand is my design, uh, not that David Steele's design was bad, it just did not suit my needs here in the shop. So I made something a little simpler and we'll cover that in probably part four. Uh, we have the parts already made, uh, but we'll assemble that right at the CoLab in uh, Davenport, Iowa, hopefully in the next few days. Um, so we'll go back to the table here again. We've got a lot of parts and it's just, they're nothing real complicated. Again, these are all covered. All these parts laying here uh, are for the, uh, the Z uh, carriage. And that's these parts, this part, bottom part, and then there's a piece way down inside, right in there, which is this guy. Uh, a lot of it is it's just a matter of, of measuring it and drilling it out. And again, it's all in the plans from David Steele. And these guys here, this is the top and bottom of the uh, Z, uh, uh, Z carriage here. And, and the only thing tricky on these guys was these, these big holes in here. And one thing I, I must express here is that when you're drilling this stuff out, especially these big holes, clamp these down on your on your drill press. I, I had one I drilled out, this guy I drilled out, I made this twice. First one went zing off my uh, drill press and <laughs> split in two immediately and I go whoop, clamp this baby down. So I had to clamp it down. Again these parts are the uh, vertical sides of the uh, Z carriage and again it's just a matter of drilling these out and you can cut them uh, in this shape. You'll drill a hole and then cut this notch out here to make it look the way it is. Same with this. This is just a series of holes drilled and then cut with a bandsaw. And again that's all covered in David uh, Steele's plans and that's, uh, you can get those again at his website uh, solsilva.com. These guys here are the front facing pieces here. And it's just a matter of, again, just, just a series of holes. Let me hold one up here to make sense to you. This goes just like, like this. So that goes right there. And these are a bit longer because I modified, you can see it's a little bit taller. This is where it would end up. So it'll make, uh, make my, the next machine just a little bit taller and uh, because of the T-slot table. So uh, next we'll uh, cover some of the uh, hardware and how to organize it all. And uh, But you can see there's a lot of parts. And over the last week I've been doing a lot of cutting and drilling and measuring. And take your time and it's, it's, it'll come together. Here in front of me is a, a plastic box that we're going to use to house all the electronics that we're going to have on the CNC machine. And uh, in part uh, five probably would be my guess that we'll, we'll start looking into this. Uh, it calls for a, a box, pure and simple, to house the, uh, the controllers and electronics. And uh, why spend a, a big fortune? I got this box over at Walmart for like three, four dollars, and it works great. And we'll show you how to set that up in, in uh, farther parts down the line in, in the build. But anyway, in the meantime, I'm using this just as a storage box for some of the components that we're, that we're using to, to build the machine. I'll, I'll zoom in here. And... Uh, there we go. Show you what's in it. What's here are some of the uh, uh, rollers for the gantries, and this is uh, this is nothing more than skateboard bearings and uh, half-inch bolts on aluminum angle. And again, this is all set up in the in the uh, plans for the CNC machine. We have two different ones here that are. These guys are all pretty good length, and you can see these guys are a little bit, a little bit smaller. There we go, and they uh, are very easy to cut and shape. Uh, no time at all. Again, uh, the plans show you step by step how to how to put these all together. In the box here, ouch! In the box here, uh, gotta watch for sharp edges. I think is the uh, the Walt trimmer. And that all comes in the box. I didn't bother unboxing it. It's just like what you've seen on the machine. It all comes in a box that size. And you run, uh, I think this ran about $85, something like that. And uh, so you can get those at uh, like Lowe's or uh, Lowe's or Menard should have them. And uh, I'm going to back up here again. There we go. And then in here, what I did, I got another. Piece on. What I did was I started 
collecting all the parts and labeling everything. This is uh, gantry side studs. And there's like 15 different bags in here. CNC coupler, belt, Y-stepper, hardware, Z-lead uh, nuts. There's another one, uh, outer edge, outer, uh, outriggers number three. And it's all, I bag these up, it just makes it so much simpler, but you can see there's just, there's like 14 or 15 different bags in here. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, look at this one with, with all the nuts and bolts in it. This was for the, uh, these are again for the outriggers. And there's uh, outriggers too. This is all aluminum little pieces. We're going to pull this out anyway to show you what these look like. These are the little outer pieces. Let me zoom in a little bit more, show you. There you go. These are the outriggers that will get mounted onto the, uh, the, uh, the Y axis. And they, they're, they're, it's nothing more than a little piece of aluminum with a, with a roller on the end. This is a skateboard bearing and uh, a one inch bolt. And again, in the plans, it tells you exactly how to drill these out and bend it to the right shape. I just clamped this into a vise and, and smacked it with a hammer. That's all you got to do. And uh, very simple to make. You only got to make four of these. And you drill them out after you bend them. I would think you would have drilled them first, but uh, it's actually quite simple. And you uh, get a small vise that made for a drill press. Uh, you've seen it on uh, part one or part two when I was drilling out parts of pipes. Uh, clamp those in and drill those out. It works absolutely excellent. So there's a lot of parts you got to collect up, and the list is huge. Again, it's all on the uh, plans. Let me back up again so you, so you can see what I'm looking at. There we go. And uh, I got about 16 or 17 bags of parts here. I do this because there's just a lot of nuts and bolts and screws and hardware, and it's so hard to keep track of everything. And so I try to label these so when I do the final build, I can pull up whatever section we're working on and we'll have all the parts organized. So that's about it for uh, part three today. And um, in part four, we're going to put together the uh, stand for the CNC machine and we'll put together the, uh, the gantry, um, the Z gantry, X, Y, <laughs> Z, the Z, Z, Z gantry and Y gantry, I should say, Y gantry and the Z carriage, I should say. We'll put those together and it'll start looking like a machine then. We'll do this here at, uh, not at the Tinker's Workshop. Uh, hopefully in the next few days we'll be at the QC CoLab in Davenport. We'll also do a video on a tour of the QC CoLab and talk to Steve Hamer, the president of the group, and uh, get a better feel of what we do down there too. It's a great space, uh, maker space, and we're into a lot of different projects, and maybe we'll get to talk to a few of the members down there too. So uh, stay tuned to uh, part four. Lots of good things coming up. And I hope you've enjoyed part three. Have a good day.